Hey guys, it's Fiona and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm here with a book haul because the end of April is upon us. April ends very soon so I thought it was perfect time to do a book haul. I have a fair few books to show you because I did go to London Book Fair this month which if you haven't seen my video I did a snapshot of being in London and at London Book Fair which is my previous video. I will try and remember to put it in one of the iCards or I will leave it linked down in the description if you want to check that out. So without further ado let's move on to the books. Firstly I am going to start with manga as per usual. I had some manga releases that I picked up. Not all of them are new releases either. I picked up Carcaptor Sakura Clear Card Volume 3. Yes, Volume 3. I have been loving the manga, not so much the anime. My April wrap up does rant a little bit about my feelings of the anime, so if you want to know about that, check out my blog, which is also linked down below. That will be up at the end of April. I really love the manga. I love Clamp. Like, Kagab Sakura, I grew up with her, so really enjoying this, have read this one. Next new release I bought was Waiting for Spring, Volume 5. This is another series I am so much enjoying. Contemporary romances this time of year and going into the summer are so my jam and I just love, love the characters in this one. I think it's fantastic and it's a really easy one for anyone to start with as well definitely worth checking out. I then managed to get three bargain manga this month. So I walked into my local Bernardo's charity shop. They don't usually have that many books. I was just like, oh, I'm just, I'm passing that way. I'll just go in, you never know. I might find something interesting there. And someone must have donated loads of manga. Like the Orange series was there and the first couple of volumes of Tokyo Ghoul were there and like so on and so forth. So I bought three. I bought Black Butler volume one Seraph of the End Volume 1 and Blue Exorcist Volume 1. These were all 99 pence and they've been read maybe once? Like they're in really good condition and they're series that I've been thinking about trying and never been sure about. For 99 pence I was like I can't pass this up. Now I can try them and I'm very excited to hopefully get to them very soon. I also bought a couple of books this month. I bought one while I was in London I bought two before I went to London and I will show you those now. The two I bought before I went to London are two highly anticipated and very much talked about books. The Waterstones exclusive edition of Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. Everyone has been talking about this book and I swear to god if one more person compares it to Avatar The Last Airbender I might cry. So I intend to read this one really really soon. And the other book is Renegades by Marissa Mayer. If you don't know already, I'm a pretty big fan of Marissa Mayer and I talk about the Lunar Chronicles a lot. So very excited for a new book. I still haven't read Heartless, which I know is really bad. This I believe is a duology? I know it's part of at least a series of some sort, whether that is a duology, a trilogy, I don't know. I might read it soon or I might wait till the next one is nearer. If you know me at all, you know how I feel about series. So sometimes I just wait just wait until the next one and then I read both or two of three or whatever. While we were in London we went to Foils obviously. Kimmy had never been to Foils so took her to Foils because why not? Foils have a really good YA import section. I squealed. I have been so looking forward to this book and was like I'll order it when I get back. It'll take a little while to come through probably because I order through Wordery because I like to support at least a semi-independent of some description rather than a corporate. But Foils had it, which is even better, an actual bookshop I could support for it, so yay! I do like supporting actual bookshops and I wish there was a Foils nearer because I would support them too, but hey ho, I support them when I go down. I basically put a load of books in Kimmy's hands and went, you need these! I got Emergency Contact by Mary H.K. Choi and I am so excited for this book. It sounds so up my street. It is a contemporary, part of it's told in text messages, part of it's dual point of view. Like this book is so me and I'm so excited to read it. I did get one unsolicited book this month and that was the new middle grade title by Pierce Torday, The Lost Magician. I don't know anything about this but I've enjoyed Pierce Torday's other middle grade, the Last Wild series. I really, really loved that when I read it. I never finished it because I'm really bad at finishing series, but the first book is probably one of my all time favorite middle grades. Like it's up there with like PJ and stuff, you know, it's really good. So I'm excited for a new one 
and I am loving this cover. This proof cover is beautiful. This color is just so nice. So I'm very excited. Piers told her to be writing some magic. Yes. Because The Last Wild was like dystopian middle grade, which you don't see that much of. It was very interesting. But dystopian animal middle grade. So I'm excited to see what he does with adding his own twist to magicians. And then we have the books that I got a London Book Fair. Yay! This is not all of them because a few of them I will be passing on. Basically because we went as part of the bookseller hosted scheme. I originally signed up for this before I left being a bookseller so we got a free pass into London Book Fair but we paid for our own hotel and things like that in the end. They do give you one night but it would have been like in the middle of our nights because we were going for the whole week so we just paid for our own place to stay. They give you a bag of books in one of the lovely books on my bags tote that the creator of the Fox and the Star design of the year, which I love and I've been wanting for so long. But there's a few books in there that aren't really my thang. There was very much a mix because obviously they have to cater to a lot of different people. So I'm going to pass a few of those on. These are the ones that I'm keeping. Um, only a couple from the bag, but the rest are from Hockey Books. I Tell a Lie is also one from Macmillan that wasn't in the bag. In fact, there was two I didn't get in the bag that I've got. Oh, right, I've got a load of books. Let me just show them to you. First, I'm going to start with the books that came in the bag that I am keeping. So the first one is Skybound, A Journey in Flight by Rebecca Long Crane. This just sounds really interesting and a very different kind of nonfiction, but I think will really appeal to me. I just, I read the first page and was like, yeah, no. Yeah. I like, I like where this is going. There was also a copy of The Skylark's War by Hilary McKay. This is a middle grade title from Macmillan. This was also in the bag. I love, like, I love this handwritten font stuff that's everywhere at the moment. It makes me so happy. This is a historical middle grade, which is not normally my thing, but we shall give it a go. And I also got a copy of The Stormkeeper's Island by Catherine Doyle from Bloomsbury in the bag. And this is another middle grade. This one, there was a lot of hype about this when this was originally announced. Catherine Doyle, I believe, wrote a YA series before. And I've just noticed the character is called Fionn. F-I-O-N-N. -N. That's basically the, the Gaelic original version of my name. So that's cool. So I'm assuming there's going to be some Irish heritage in here because I think she's Irish as well. Oh, even more excited now. So this is a middle grade fantasy adventure type story. Don't know much more about it than that, but I am excited to get to it. I have two books that went in the bag, but are not from Hockey, so I'll show you those next. So we met up with our friend Liz, who is a publicist, or like a publicist for hire. She's a freelance publicist, basically. <laughs> and she is doing some work on this book, which is How To Be by Bren McDibble. This is published by Old Barn Books, who have been really awesome to Kimmy and I and we are hopefully planning to do some stuff around this book and the podcast which could be really exciting. We've never done anything like it before so we'll have to wait and see how it goes. Kimmy's read it and loved it and I am looking forward to reading it very soon. And this one is super exciting. We got this the day after they announced the proofs had arrived in the office. At London Book Fair we signed up for the children's presentations which is two hours of children's publishers presenting their books to us. They each have six minutes each. There was a couple of indies and a fair few of the larger publishers and it was a lot of their books leading up to Christmas. Not a lot of YA was mentioned in there so we were a bit kind of like mm. but kids books we're into them obviously for Kimmy because she still runs the kids room. It's brilliant but even it's interesting for me because obviously I have a niece and nephew. I still love books. I still love kids books and I probably always will so that was cool and at the end of that Macmillan had sponsored it and they had provided some drinks and some free books. One of the books was a copy we already had which is the Hilary McKay and the other one was the one that had just dropped. Oh yes, it's Flawed by Sarah Bernard, Holly Bourne, Tanya Byrne, Non Pratt, Melinda Salisbury, Lisa Williamson and Eleanor Wood. Oh my god, literally I was across the other side of the room and I saw someone pick this up and I went that is yellow Macmillan proof. I know yesterday, Flawed dropped and it's a yellow Macmillan proof. And I literally was in the middle of a conversation and said, excuse me, I'm just gonna have to go over there. And like ran to the other side of the room and held it up for Kimmy going, Kimmy, Kimmy, Kimmy. And she then politely excused herself and ran over as well. Very excited to have this and so grateful to Macmillan for letting us take some copies. 
I'm so excited about this book. If you've heard us on the podcast, you know this is one of our most anticipated books this year. I'm so excited. So thank you so much to Macmillan for letting us take a copy each away and maybe some extras to give away at some point soon. But you'll have to follow the podcast to know when that's gonna happen. So all the links for the podcast are in the description. The rest of the books are from, well, they're from Bonnier. They're not just hotkey books because I've got a mixture of ages again. You know a guy, his name is Nico. He is the key accounts manager for Bonnier. He mostly talks to us about Hotkey and Piccadilly Press, which are their two main children's ones because he knows that's what we're into. So we got to meet him in person while at London Book Fair because we had no chance to, and we interviewed him for the podcast, which will be up really soon. So subscribe to the podcast if you want to hear us talk to a very nice sounding Frenchman. <sighs> Very nice accent. If that doesn't sell you, nothing will. He invited us into the Bonnier booth, which by the way, was humongous in the middle of London Book Fair. It was huge. And as we finished our interview, he was like, the guys are just gonna pack this up. And they were going, do you want anything? Please take it so we don't have to. They very kindly put some books into a hand and went, do you have this one? No, take it. Do you have this one? No, take it. Thank you so much to the guys at Bonnier Hotkey everybody um, for being like, so what do you like? Do you like this? Do you like this? Take this, you'll like this. It was really nice to have a chat with some people as well. It was really cool. So thank you very much to Bonnier for that. And now I will show you what they put in my paws. First off, I have a very much a younger children's fiction and that is Marge and the Great Train Rescue. I remember hand selling loads of this at the shop and very excited to have this. Is it signed? How cute is that? So my nephew has just turned five and he's learning to read. And my niece will be turning four in August. So I will be sending this to my sister to read with either her kids or she's a teacher to read with the school, whichever she chooses to do. But it's so cute. I love these books. They're just they're so nice. Then Nico gave us a copy of Chloe Cole's Bookshop Girl. Chloe Cole's is a pretty prolific name. Um, if you don't already know her, you might know her by her giant beehive. It's kind of her signature look. There she is on the back of the book. She comes from a book selling background, so she knows about this kind of stuff. And I'm really excited for a book about bookshops from a bookseller. It's really cool. Like she works at Foils now, but she's worked at Waterstones. Like she's been there, done all that. What I also really, really like, this is a teen title. It's teen, so it's kind of like tweeny, but it's thin, like, so many teens are put off by the whoppers of books. Like, I mean, look at all these books. They're pretty sizable in comparison to this. Like, you see? So this is actually a great one from a bookseller who knows what they're talking about in bookshops and someone who's passionate about books and writing and about getting teens to read and it being a really wonderful book. And I can just see so many tweens picking this up and loving it because it's not a scary book and I feel like this is a great one to get people interested in books and bookshops. So very, very excited. I'll shut up about this now, but it sounds really good and I'm really excited to get to it. I sound really passionate about books. Like, I don't remember the last time I felt this passionate about books. This is so weird. I forgot how passionate I used to be as a bookseller, like several years ago before I was feeling a bit ugh. But like, I think it's my t-shirt today. I'm wearing my Isadora Moon t-shirt, which makes me really happy. <laughs> I love Isadora Moon. It's another five to eight series that is perfect. They handed us another book. This is a middle grade one. This is The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. I haven't read this book, but I remember last Christmas, we could not keep it in stock. It was getting great reviews in the papers and we just kept selling out. And I have no idea why, but there is like a tiny dragon so I'm hoping there's dragons in this. Yeah, this just looks really exciting. Again, like, it's fairly chunky though, so it would put some readers off middle grade, but I'm excited to read it and see what it's all about. Moonlight is magic. Ooh, I love anything to do with the moon. Oh, very exciting. I then have a couple of actual proper YA titles that we got to choose from the booth. So I was handed Claudia Gray's Defy the Stars and Defy the Worlds. If you read my blog, you know that I mentioned I have these as ebooks and I was gonna try and read them while I was away. Confession, I didn't manage it. And then if I liked them, I would buy them. Um, I actually ended up having a discussion with one of the people in the booth about the cover change. And I was like, oh, I never picked them up because I didn't like the covers at all. And she was like, I know, don't worry, we have these editions. And I was like, can I has? And she was like, yeah. 
I'm really excited to read these. I love me some space YA opera shit. We then have a fairly new release or it's just about to come out. This is a finished copy. I'm assuming it's due very imminently, probably May. This is Ascension by Victor Dixon. This is a bestseller in France, has received loads of accolades in France and I think it's four books currently that are in existence, published in France. And this is what they're gonna be like. Um, so you have Ascension, Distortion, Collision. I believe there is a fourth one. This is a really cool new sci-fi uh, set on a spaceship. It's a little bit more mature, I think is what I'm gonna say. Um, basically it's about having to seduce a member of the opposite sex on this ship to survive and all the other shit that's going on. It's very weird. And lastly, very kindly, they gave me a half a copy of The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. I haven't read a Holly Black novel ever? I used to love Fae books and then I really went off them. Um, I totally went off them several years ago so but I've heard amazing things about this and I'm it's pretty safe to say I'm intrigued so I said yes please and thank you very much. <laughs> um, so thank you so much to Hotkey for well, to Bonnier, to all the guys that we spoke to for the books, it is much appreciated. And have you read any of the books I've hauled today? What did you think? Have you read The Cruel Prince? Were you one of the lovers or one of the, uh, I don't know, people? Let me know in the comments and we'll have a discussion. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, feel free to like the video and subscribe for more bookish and art and craft and life content. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye.